Would you be the jerk for disinheriting your daughter? We'll get into that in a bit, but first, am I the jerk for being the reason why the family vacation has to be cancelled? Okay, to make it short, I'm married for money. My husband's with me for appearances and we're happy with our arrangement. My husband and I married because I have all the qualifications to please his family and he takes financial care of me. We are very fond of each other and even love each other, but not in the classical marriage sense. We're like amazing roommates with some benefits. He and I are free to live our lives independently and without stresses. He's not worried about being cut off from his family. And I'm finally financially stable and I'm free to work my job that simply is not as economically beneficial. To the problem, my sisters have never approved of my decision. They say I sold myself, which, fair. But still we used to be civil with each other. Last week we had a family barbecue. I went without my husband. Everything was going great until my oldest niece, 21, sat down next to me and we started talking. And then she asked me straight up if I was with my husband for money. I explained to her how we met, our agreement and so on. She then asked me if I think it would be okay for her to pretend to be her gay best friend's girlfriend. I told her it was up to her to decide and if there were no negatives to it, like her having actual feelings for him, someone getting hurt like a romantic partner, etc. It was a lovely talk. Strike two was apparently when my other nieces asked me where my husband was and I told them that he was on vacation. They asked me why I didn't go with him and I said that we only sometimes go together to vacations. We usually take little trips together but go on longer vacations with friends or family. My niece, 16, asked me if it was true what her mom and aunt said about me being a gold digger and I just said I guess so. Like that doesn't faze me. I know my sisters constantly talk about me behind my back. And I'm not ashamed about my marriage at all, so I see no need to lie. Later that night, my sisters cornered me and we had a fight about my words with my nieces. They said that it was completely inappropriate what I told them. That I'm free to live my freaked up life, but to not let my nieces think that it is okay what I do. I called them small minded and that I was only answering my nieces questions and I was even honest. They are free to do their own decisions. My sisters kept cornering me calling me all sorts of names and saying I was basically influencing their daughters negatively because I was miserable. I said some words back and left, not talking to them the whole week. Now there's a huge fallout because I pulled out of the family vacation because of this fight, but the vacation would be at my husband's summer house, and as I'm not going, my husband doesn't feel comfortable lending my family the house. My family have been calling me a huge jerk, and my sister said that I was blowing things out of proportion. Am I the jerk? Should I still go? I don't really think OP's the jerk here. I mean, they're just being honest about their life choices and what makes them happy. Is what OP is doing going against the grain usually for what people want? Sure, but they're not doing anything illegal. They're not doing anything explicitly immoral. They're just being honest with who they are. Some people love that life and OP clearly does. If they imprint on their daughters and their daughters grow up to seek a life like that and it makes them happy, OP's not a villain. It's kind of hilarious if they basically denounce your entire existence and then still got upset that they couldn't visit your husband's house. Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you guys enjoy getting to decide whether or not all of these people are jerks, why not hit those like and subscribe buttons down below? That said, our next story is... Am I the jerk for getting our neighborhood dog Olympics cancelled instead of bending the rules for a neighbor? I understand that this is a silly issue to have, but it's an issue we have and I need advice. Five to six years ago, my HOA decided our neighborhood is boring and encouraged people to come up with ideas and activities to liven things up. Thus, my pup Olympics was born. It's just the neighborhood dogs competing, poorly, in different silly events for two days and being rewarded with treats. Early on, there would be prizes for the owners of whichever dog won each event, and it really was all fun and games. After a couple of years, we started doing a paid entry for each event, and the money went towards cash prizes and a donation to a really great local animal shelter where lots of us got our pups. Might be worth it to note that most people in the neighborhood choose to donate their cash prize toward the shelter fund, so we usually come up with a pretty great donation. People look forward to the Olympics every year, it's ridiculous but it's fun, and we all loved it. 18 months ago, a new neighbor moved in and she has a poodle who frequently competes and wins dog competitions. This dog has a million followers on Instagram. We all follow the page and obviously root for this dog in the competitions. 
No issue with the dog itself. However, it ruined Pup Olympics last year. This dog swept every single competition. There is literally one event for senior dogs that it didn't qualify for and that's the only one that this poodle didn't win. We all just kind of stood there for two days and gave cash prizes to the same woman for every event. To make matters worse, she also didn't donate a single extra penny to the shelter fund. Bonus, am I the jerk if I'm the wrong for being judgy here? This has taken an event for families and kids and turned it into something it was never meant to be. It's like having a professional athlete compete at a high school field day. So, Pup Olympics are happening soon, but this year my committee decided on no competition dogs rule. To make it more fair for the other owners and families, the poodle owner got notice of this and has gone ballistic. Our HOA had a committee meeting and decided in her favor that we couldn't exclude her or her dog if we wanted to have the competition in the neighborhood. I thought about it and then just went ahead and sent a cancellation notice out. Someone from the HOA board tried to pull it back together but just isn't getting much interest. Now the poodle owner has sent me multiple vindictive messages implying that I did this to hurt her personally and the neighborhood is split 50-50 on who was in the wrong. So am I the jerk? Edit for more info, I didn't have space in the post but to clarify, deciding to cancel was more of a long story short after 4 days of meetings with this woman to try to come up with something agreeable. First I offered to do a couple of categories for more serious competition dogs, but was told by the HOA that I'm not allowed to host any kind of events that make it seem like any part of this is a real dog competition. Then I tried to restrict how many events each dog can enter, and she wanted that number to be 8. Out of 10 events, she wanted 8. That was the number she got the HOA board to agree with her on, and they basically told me that if I couldn't let that happen, then I couldn't host the competition. So I completely understand OP's issue here. I mean, you've got an incredibly well-trained dog that's going to come in and sweep the competition. Everybody else in the neighborhood doesn't have trained dogs or dogs that were coached to do all of this stuff. My suggestion would have been switch it to more of a friendlies type thing. Move all of the money to raising and donating to a good cause. Don't do cash prizes for people. Maybe still do prizes and yeah, she can have all 10 or 8 trophies or whatever. But make the focus the spirit and fun of the event rather than taking the whole thing off the board because clearly this one person and dog is going to dominate. I think in that circumstance, the crowd can root for who's at least like closest to second. And I think the main stressor, which is those cash prizes, is off the table. I definitely don't blame OP though. I mean, what they essentially were having here was an amateur dog competition and a professional was being forced through. Our next story is, am I the jerk for telling my wife to just let our daughter wear her sneakers? So I, 35 year old male, have four kids with my wife. Our oldest is 15. She has a pair of red Air Force Ones that she got in 6th grade for her birthday. She bought them herself. We were poor and in the shelter and she had enough money saved up to buy herself something nice. Fast forward, she's in 10th grade and still fits them, but of course they're dirty. She cleans them when she can, but the dirt doesn't come off, so my wife doesn't like letting her wear them. This morning, she tried to sneak and wear them. Wife made her take them off and offered a different pair of sneakers. Our daughter didn't want to wear the black Karachis that she was offered. She wanted to wear the red Air Force Ones. She had a red and black outfit on and the shoes matched it. So she was of course frustrated that my wife said to change it and ended up changing her whole outfit. Wife got mad and told her to stop the attitude. Daughter left out for school. I told my wife I think she should just let her wear the sneakers and that it's not like CPS is going to come just because her sneakers are dirty. My wife says that she shouldn't be wearing dirty sneakers and wants to throw them away. She said she'd throw them away today, but she wants to do it while our daughter is at school. But I think she should just leave it alone and to just pick and choose her battles wisely. I don't mind the dirty sneakers. They're old and she likes them and it's not hurting anyone. Am I the jerk? I don't think Gopi's the jerk here. I mean, I guess you'd have to really see the sneakers to get a grasp of it. I mean, if they're like falling apart and they're molding or something, maybe you can justify it then, but like... If they're just dirty or what I would say well loved, if they want to wear those shoes and it's still functionally good, why refuse to let them? I know darn well that if I was that age and I had my favorite pair of shoes, both aesthetically or just how they feel, I personally would be pretty darn upset being told no. And honestly, if anything, 
Having been in a situation where they were short on money, I'm left surprised that OP's wife is even acting like this. Our next story is, am I the jerk for using my mom's death in an argument with my dad? When I was 11, I'm 17 year old male now, my mom died in a crash. I was at school when it happened, so I didn't know. My dad saw her in the hospital before she died. When I got home from school, my dad told me that my mom was going on a work trip and that she wouldn't be back for a couple of weeks. I remember really missing her and when two weeks was almost up, I was really excited for her to come home and I was talking to my dad about how excited I was and he never told me she wasn't coming back. After two weeks was up, he told me her flight was delayed and she'd be home in a few days. Eventually, after a lot of waiting for her, he told me that she was dead. It took him three freaking weeks to tell me. I'm still angry at him for not telling me. I try not to be because, I don't know, maybe it was the grief or something. But him not telling me for so long really freaked me up and I found it really hard to trust him again. A few days ago, we got into an argument because he found out I have a boyfriend and I didn't tell him. He said, it's really important to tell each other big things, otherwise how can we trust each other? I mentioned how he didn't tell me about my mom dying for three weeks, and I think that's a pretty big thing to keep from your son. He said I was out of order saying that, and he's told a few family members and they all agree, and they keep texting me telling me to apologize and telling me how selfish and disrespectful I am. Am I the jerk? I definitely don't think OP's the jerk here. I think it's a very valid thing to bring up. He might see it as bringing up old wounds that don't need to be brought up, but it's very true as to how you're feeling. How can this person preach trust and connection and communication when he did one of the worst violations of that very thing when you were 11 years old? This ain't a one-up in an argument type thing. This is a very legitimate reason you're bringing up. Our next story is, am I the jerk for telling my mom she never had control over what happened with me and her stepdaughter? After she got married, I, 17 year old female, was 9 when my mom told me she was dating someone. My mom had me when she was young and my aunt, her sister, took care of me alongside my cousin and we were the best of friends and as close as siblings. There was a girl in school called Hannah who was pretty awful to every single person. My cousin was included in that more than I was but she said pretty crappy things to me sometimes too, just not as often and nothing as cool as she said to others. She used to call my cousin slurs toward gay people because his friends were mostly girls. She was so young that at the start, teachers would dismiss it as her not understanding what she was saying. And she probably did pick it up from somewhere, but it didn't mean she didn't know what the words she used meant. Hannah was always in trouble, and a few times my aunt was called into the school to discuss what happened with my cousin. Hannah's dad was always in the school too because of her behavior. Hannah wasn't alone either. She had one friend who was even worse than Hannah, and more was done to her. Then when I was nine, I found out my mom started dating Hannah's dad, and they moved us in together quickly, and they were married less than a year later. Hannah was still acting that way after they got married. I ended up not seeing my aunt or cousin much because mom was mad my aunt didn't include Hannah more, and as a punishment, she denied us the chance to hang out even though my aunt acted more like my mom than my mom had up to that point. When Hannah was 13, her friend's parents moved and she never saw her again. After that, she tried to become close to me. I had always hated my mom marrying Hannah's dad, and I was never open to the idea of being close with Hannah. I hated her then and nothing has changed on my end, even though Hannah did change and isn't a bully anymore. Hannah has actually been really lonely the last few years because most kids won't give her the time of day, and the ones that do end up ignoring her once they realize how bad Hannah was to others. My mom expected me to step in and be Hannah's sister and her friend, and we fought about it a lot. Now that I'm older, I do spend time with my cousin and my aunt, and I don't care if my mom hates it. She told me I should be standing by my family, aka Hannah, and that I'm holding her behavior as a young kid against her too much. She told me she's my mom and she's done everything to raise me better than I'm turning out to be, and she did her best to bring us closer together. I told mom she never had control over us just because she got married to Hannah's dad. I told her I would never want Hannah in my life, and I will only ever hardly tolerate her presence, and nothing she says can change that. My mom said I was behaving more spitefully than she ever would have expected, and that she was ashamed of me for saying all that. Am I the jerk? Personally, somebody that 
was a bully to you all throughout growing up and not just you but people close to you that you cared about, I feel like you have a right to not want to have a relationship with this person. I feel like in general, if they're getting married together, you still have a right to not have that relationship simply because I don't think it's right to force and expect somebody to have one. Hardly tolerate? I think that's just about all they can really ask for. Our next story is, am I the jerk for blowing up in my boyfriend for finishing a tub of sour cream in one day? I feel absolutely ridiculous posting this here, but I'm literally crying about this and wondering if I'm crazy overreacting. As with everywhere in the US, grocery prices in my area are astronomical, and I've had to completely change the way I budget for food. I have to be aware of every penny I spend in order to get the most of my money when it comes to food. Every week I have a grocery budget, I plan out all meals and what I get for the week is what we have, I do not do extra grocery runs during the week unless it's absolutely necessary. My boyfriend pays for about 30% of groceries and I pay 70 because he pays more for utilities, so it evens out. However, I always tell him if he wants additional food or if he's still hungry, he can get it himself. Keep in mind we're not portion restricted. I bought a standard sized tub of sour cream and it was supposed to be used in three different meals. I told him this. I came home today ready to make dinner and it was gone, not even used for one meal. He just snacked on it throughout the day. Admittedly, I blew up and started crying asking him why he would do that when he knows that it was supposed to be used for several meals. I try so hard to budget and save money and I feel like he just doesn't care. I told him he can either buy a new tub or I'm not cooking for the rest of the week. I told him it's a matter of respect. He thinks it's no big deal and I can just go get a new tub and is making a point of saying I should be the one to get it, not him. He says I'm being dramatic for crying over sour cream and I know it's not super expensive, about $3 where I'm at, but it's the principle. I'm just upset that he can't respect what I'm trying to do and he doesn't understand that we're strapped for money right now. Am I the jerk? Mini update, those of you who said it's not really about the sour cream but about being disrespected are 100% correct. Also, the Greek yogurt has remained untouched, so I'll be using that and any future sour cream purchases will come from him. I'm not gonna lie, I 100% see this as a relationship kind of in a free fall. When you are doing your best to budget and try to make things last and work, and then your partner just goes and willingly scrambles it all up, doesn't pay attention to anything you were trying to do, and then just looks at you and shrugs your shoulders when you bring it up, at that point what do you have? I can't tell you how much nicer it would be if he admitted, you know, I shouldn't have done that, I'm sorry, I'll go get another tub. That version of this guy would be like a knight in shining armor. This next story is, am I the jerk for refusing to have dinner with my boyfriend's parents if his ex-wife's gonna be there? I, female 28, got with my boyfriend, male 28, about three years ago. When we met, he had just gotten divorced and we officially started dating a year later. His ex-wife doesn't like me. She made it clear from day one and I'm not blaming her or anything. I mean, I never got divorced or married for that matter. So I don't know what's the appropriate amount of time to date after a divorce. His parents are still very fond of her and often invite her for dinner. That means we often have to see her when we're going over to his parents. The issue is that she makes it obvious that she doesn't like me and always throws little digs at me. I told my boyfriend and he talked with her and she promised she'll try to be more civil and she is more civil, but I can always feel her looking distastefully at me, so I'm often uncomfortable. Anyways, his parents invited us for dinner last Friday, but his ex-wife was going to be there too. So I told them that even though I've liked them, I wouldn't be here if she was because I'm uncomfortable. They weren't happy. They called me petty and manipulative. They said his ex-wife was always going to be a part of their life and they felt like I was trying to get rid of her. It obviously wasn't my intention. I've tried to explain, but they didn't care. My boyfriend also tried to talk to them, but they didn't care either. My boyfriend still went, I've told him to, and apparently they said they won't invite me anymore since I don't appreciate the invite. I'm so confused because it's not the outcome I thought it would be. I thought they'd understand and invite us when his ex-wife isn't there too. So now I'm wondering if I maybe overreacted and should just get that if I want a good relation with his parents, I also have to accept his ex-wife. This is frankly bizarre to me and I don't think Opie's the jerk at all here. It's almost kind of like children and siblings in the sense that 
if everything you do has to have one of your children always there and you never give your other children one-on-one -on -one time, it's not fair to that other child, right? And then doubly it's weird because it's literally his ex-wife. Do they not understand why that would be awkward in general? This next story is, am I the jerk for exposing my family and possibly costing my stepmom her job? I, 19-year-old female, have two stepbrothers named Dave, 23-year-old male, and Jack, 25-year-old male. I have one half-brother who's nine. Growing up with them was honestly a nightmare. I don't get along with them or their mother, my stepmom. My mom died before they came into our lives, so she's really the only mother figure I've ever had. It would be a whole lot to get into, but in general, they bullied and teased me from the moment I met them. Their mom played favorites quite a lot, and I would get disciplined for little things like leaving a light on while their sons lived in absolute filth and didn't shower for weeks. I was forced to get a job at 15, while my stepbrothers were allowed to live at home rent-free, no job or college. I moved out last year to stay at my step-aunt's, step-mom's sister. Almost everything I make goes to rent a room for her and still contribute to chores, housekeeping for parts of the house that I'm not even allowed to use. Staying with her and still within my family's control is the only way they would let me keep in touch and see my little brother, who I practically raised. They use him to threaten me every time I do something they don't approve of. I went on a weekend trip with friends a few hours away. When I came back, I realized that my entire family was waiting for me on the couch. Older brothers, stepmom, and my dad, all just sitting there waiting for me to walk in the door. When I did, they started yelling at me and telling me that I turned my location off and that they couldn't text me because I ignored them. And how dare I tell my friends not to respond. Yes, they found and harassed my friends. The whole argument turned into them following me to my room. When I opened the door, I saw the entire thing was trashed. Three-day-old food, rotten bowls and plates, old pizza boxes all piled up on my bed, which had been stripped of its sheets and was completely bare. Dirty clothes and trash everywhere. It smelled like pee. I lost my crap at that point because I knew the stuff was my stepbrother's. When I asked why it was in there, they said that they let him and his friends play D&D &D and sleep there because they were in a rough spot and boys just get rowdy sometimes. Let it stand that I have OCD, which I've learned to manage myself, but was crippling during high school and literally almost drove me off the deep end. I don't let it interfere with other people or their lives, but it very much impacts mine. And the fact that they allowed my stepbrother and his friends to trash my room, knowing that it would basically make the whole thing a biohazard for me, speaks volumes. I slammed the door in their faces, grabbed my essentials and left. I haven't spoken to any of them since, but now they're accusing me of leaving my aunt without necessary income and overreacting. I responded by posting their texts to me online. Somehow, the pictures found their way to my stepmom's boss, it's a very small town, and they're threatening to review her employment due to it. Am I the jerk? I really don't think OP's the jerk, and I feel for them because they legitimately care about their little brother and they are using him as kind of a blackmail tool to keep OP paying and sticking around. OP deserves better than that. I just don't want to see them have to give up their relationship with their little brother and risk him being poisoned by all those people too to have that sense of freedom. Our next story is, am I the jerk for telling my husband the inheritance we're getting from my grandparents should go to my sister's kids if anything happens to me? I, 31-year-old female, came into a very good amount of money once my grandmother passed away last month. We're still sorting out the details of taxes and retirement and so on. Just for some background, both my parents and grandparents owned fairly successful companies and made my husband, 33-year-old male, sign a prenuptial agreement when we got married. My husband was fine with it at the time, and for the most part still is. Now that some of that money is starting to come to us via my grandma's death, things got a bit weird. We don't have kids, and are still kind of on the fence about if we actually want them in the future. However, my sister has twin boys and I love them dearly. I'm extremely close with my sister, but not so much the rest of my family. My husband has three nephews and two nieces on his side, and I'm not very close with any of his family. We get along, but I would just consider us friendly, not close. We were talking about wills to make sure that we have everything in order in case anything happens to us. I mentioned that even though we have a prenup, I'd like to try to find a way for him to get as much as possible. 
Then I mentioned, if we don't have kids, I would also like a chunk to go to my sister's boys and any other children she may have for college for a house. He became very standoffish and asked about his side, mentioning it wouldn't be exactly fair to not leave any of the inheritance to them. I said I understood where he's coming from, but we aren't close with them and this money was given to my family. He says I'm being selfish for not including them, but he does see where I'm coming from. He's been making some comments about how he still doesn't think it's fair, and now I'm starting to think I'm a jerk for even mentioning it. I don't know, am I the jerk? More info, I do need to look at the prenup again. I know the main reason for it was to keep my share of the family business in the family. I know there's a clause in there about him not having them, even if I die. My parents mentioned another trust they have set aside for me, but I'm not sure exactly the terms. If I die before I get that though, my husband would not receive any money from it. That's more of why I'm trying to get around it as much as I can. My sister, along with all of the other grandchildren, also got a very inheritance from my grandparents. I want to state again, I want to leave the bulk of the money to my husband and some to my nephews. We're still in the beginning stages of all of this, so I apologize for not having a ton of details. Flat out, this is OP's inheritance. I don't in any way blame OP for wanting their money to go to a specific person. If they want their inheritance, if they so happen to pass away, to go to a specific person or persons, that's 100% their given right. I don't think there's any more fair or unfair than what the person themselves personally wants. Even if that means somebody who was devoted and gave their life to this person feels like they got cheated out of it. It's what that person ended up wanting. Our next story is, am I the jerk for disinheriting my daughter? I didn't actually disinherit my daughter, it's just what my wife and her claims. My first wife had drug problems and still got primary custody of our son. I was young and didn't fight her on custody and when he got older, we weren't close, so I felt awkward asking him to live with us. She tried to prevent us from communicating and moved around a lot, so it was always hard to spend any time with him until he got his own phone. But now I've spent more time with him and now we're close. My second wife is hardworking and very financially successful as an engineer. In fact, she makes more than me. Our daughter takes after her. She's a straight A student and is going to be back in school to be a nursing practitioner soon. My wife is angry with me because my daughter and I aren't close. She goes to her mom for everything and doesn't speak to me much. We were close when she was young, but since high school, it's like she pretends I don't exist. I try to reach out, but it's met with silence. I think my wife poisoned her against me because I've spent most of my money on my son. My wife told my daughter I didn't pay for a cent of college for her, and my wife did all of the saving for her college fund. I didn't really contribute to my daughter's college fund. I didn't pay for any piano lessons, etc. I did pay for half of the family expenses with my wife, like the mortgage, but my extra money has been going to my son. Partly child support, but I've also been contributing outside of that. He didn't finish school with good enough grades for college. I gave him money to upgrade his grades and helped him get a place to start college. He got two semesters in and then left because he was depressed. He has a lot of issues from growing up with his mother and I feel partly responsible because I didn't try to fight for custody. I gave him money for rent and he has issues holding down a job so he needs support. My daughter recently reached out with a schedule for her and her fiance's wedding. It had his and mom's dance but not the father-daughter one. I was confused and asked my daughter about that and she replied, we aren't close enough for that. I was shocked and asked her why she would consider us not close and she said, well you basically disinherited me. I called her and asked her to explain and she said because her mom paid for college and will be helping her with her nursing practitioner degree and I didn't give a crap about her after middle school because of my son. I explained everything I said above to her and she knew most of it before that as well. She said I should have split my funds and time between them. I told her I felt like I did, and she got angry and said I didn't. And it's like she was being raised by a single mom and that's why she's uncomfortable with having a wedding dance with me, because it would be a lie. I felt like I was fair to them. I lived with my daughter, I just didn't pay for things outside of food, mortgage, utilities, etc. That's because I felt like my wife had it covered, and my son was getting nothing. My ex-wife wasn't saving anything and I wanted to help him because he was having a much harder time than my daughter who had an attentive mother, but she felt I was prioritizing my son and in her words, disinherited her. I feel like she should understand the situation, but she didn't want me to be included in the wedding much at all. 
I mean, I don't want to come across as too judgmental. It just feels lackadaisical. You had a kid who thought he wasn't getting cared for, and after the fact, you go, oh, well, I regret not fighting for his custody. If you knew or believed this, why weren't you? And frankly, OP kind of all but spelled out that they just didn't give their daughter much of the attention that she needed. I mean, while this daughter must have wanted more connection and more time with you, all she saw was you shoveling money hand over fist for your son and not even really fighting for him either. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another crazy Am I the Jerk here story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.